Hi, it's John here on uh, sabbatical and here I am at Cartmel Priory. Um, I'm over uh, on retreat here at uh, Borbag Hall and just took a lovely stroll after breakfast this morning and come across this uh, priory here, um, which is, there's been a Christian community here, I think building as well since 1188. Um, and I thought we could just pause, talk a little bit about um, the climate and, and ecological emergency and then prayer. So we really are in an emergency. Um, Boris Johnson, I think at one of the COP discussions, said that we are at uh, two minutes to midnight. Um, I appreciate him showing how late in the day it is, but I would even argue that we are we're past midnight. The climate emergency isn't something that can be avoided, but it's rather we need to uh, choose what catastrophe we're going to uh, move uh, towards. We're at 1.2 degrees above pre-industrial temperatures and climate breakdown and these extra temperatures act as a threat multiplier. And so we see uh, rising seas uh, increase in uh, extreme uh, temperatures which are not compatible with human life. Um, climate breakdown means that there's going to be more food shortages around the world. Already in East Africa there's a famine taking place affecting the lives of millions of people with uh, thousands of parents not knowing how they're going to feed their kids tonight. And the experts tell us that uh, Climate change is one of the contrib contributory factors about why there is famine. Um, we also know the floods that are taking place. This is already happening at 1.2 degrees and it's extremely likely that in the coming uh, years, within a decade, we'll have exceeded 1.5 uh, degrees heading to a world of 2 degrees or more. Uh, Antonio Guterres, the UN Secretary General, while analysing the science from the IPCC report, said that we're on a current trajectory of heading towards 2.4 degrees above pre-industrial temperatures. Um, that's a future which really isn't compatible with human civilization. Um, let me suggest three possible scenarios of where of where we are going. Well, we could end up in the butterfly situation. I think it's extremely unlikely, but the fly is where we've managed to do the deep and rapid cuts that are necessary with carbon emissions. And we do them quickly and we manage to transition from our fossil fuel dependent society to something different, it's like a butterfly. Another scenario which we uh, possibly face, and it really is on the cards, is what we might call the door door where uh, we don't get a grip on uh, rising temperatures, we don't get a grip on climate change. Uh, this is our current trajectory and uh, what we're looking at is the collapse of uh, civilization, of culture as we know it, and a extinction or near extinction event for uh, human beings and also for much of the uh, living world around us. So you've got the butterfly, you've got the door door. And then the third scenario we've got is that of the phoenix. And the phoenix is a recognition that we really are in choppy waters, stormy waters with climate breakdown. But we recognise that actually the world as we know it will and, and culture will collapse. Some amount of suffering is certainly locked in and it's going to, it's going to happen. We are moving into a world of mass migration, mass starvation and societal collapse. Uh, just on that note, the UN reckons that by 2050, we could see between 250 million to a billion uh, refugees because of climate breakdown. And the chances are that we're not going to be on the lower end of that number. These are huge numbers of people who are having to relocate around the globe because of um, uh, temperature rises, uh, because there's no food. Uh, because uh, they live in a low-lying place and the uh, sea levels have, have, have flooded their area. Um, but the phoenix is that, yes, collapse will happen, but out of the ashes will arise 
another culture, another civilization. Um, and I'm a Christian. Many of you watching this are Christians. Um, but we also know there's another story we live by, the story of Jesus. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. So as we move into these possible futures, um, let us seek to be those who uh, mitigate, uh, seek to lower emissions, both individually in our church communities, but also let us drive a spoke into the wheel of unrestrained capitalism and fossil fuel industry to curtail emissions because every, every portion of a degree really matters. Um, but also, as well as mitigation, let us be those who are involved in adaptation, that we move into a rapidly changing world with cruciform love, that we love and love, we look and love like Jesus, whatever befalls, whichever future we are moving in. And on my sabbatical, these are some things which I'm thinking about, what it is to be a Christian community that is involved in cruciform adaptation. So, bit of a long video this one, but let's have a, let's have a bit of a prayer. Father of creation, God of compassion. You made a world of wonder that takes our breath away. It is your world and it is our home. To you be all praise, honour and glory. Father of creation, God of comfort, our hearts are heavy, our souls are sad when we take stock, when we realise where we are, what we face, what's locked in and what may be. Father, send your Holy Spirit to bring comfort and courage to our hearts. Lord, give us wisdom that we would be able to live faithfully in such a time as this. Lord, we pray for the world's most vulnerable who are already affected by climate change. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we pray that you would dismantle the power and influence of unrestrained capitalism and the fossil fuel industry. Lord, let us move towards a a future which we see the flourishing of humanity. And Lord, let your church be those who at this hour tend and keep your world and our home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.